Hi everybody, my name is Seth Cowan and I just wanted to give my testimony for Jesus Christ and uh, I just want to let you guys know that on Friday the 13th of May in 2016 I passed away from something called a Widowmaker heart attack. It's a main blockage of your main artery and only 10% of the people live from it. 90% of people die. But I, I was one of the 10% that lived and uh, nobody would help me. When I told them I was having a heart attack, they thought I was joking. No, you're too young to have a heart attack. They were, my, one of the people I asked for help even said, oh, I'm having a heart attack, ha, 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 and hung up the phone on me. So, you know, that was my first experience was something got me out of that house when I was so weak I couldn't even dress myself. I was so weak I couldn't even walk. And something got me out of that house dialed the phone got me I this is all vague I don't even really remember dialing 911 I don't even really remember getting down the stairs all I remember is at the bottom of the stairs I was sitting there in like boxer shorts and a tank top not realizing oh I didn't even get dressed and uh, on top of that I had ripped one of my fingernails off and I don't know how that happened either I, I got from my bedroom in down to the road and I'm not ex exactly sure it was all hazy how it, how it even happened but as soon as I get down there as soon as I come back to consciousness the ambulance was pulling up so I get in the ambulance and I that was the second experience I had was a a man by the name of David LaSalvia who uh, he's my paramedic and he uh, this guy's touched by God for sure cuz I've never had anybody tell me I'm having the worst event of my life and calm me down at the same time this guy's touched by God he's a paramedic that's meant to be helping people and uh, he calmed me down in the middle of a horrible heart attack and uh, I was dying I, would, I died in the ambulance passed away flatlined and saw a white light and actually while this is all going down I can actually hear the paramedic David yelling at me saying Seth Seth uh, what's your pain the first thing he said was what was your pain level on a scale of 1 to 10 when I didn't respond a couple times he says Seth Seth stay with me and then I heard him arguing with the uh, driver who was a girl by the name of Jessica Belshi she saved my life possibly two times because of her fast driving but I just like to give a shout out to David and Jessica thank you guys for saving my life I really appreciate that God bless you guys so, uh, I started seeing a white light while he's telling me, Seth, stay with me, Seth, stay with me. And, uh, the first thing I noticed is all my, I got scared knowing that I was dying. And I saw that light and, uh, everything just went away and I felt better. And I felt calm and relaxed and I felt like, I didn't see him physically, but there was a white veil. That's what I, what I can see. I didn't see a tunnel. I didn't see any of that stuff. I saw a pure white light that was so bright, but I could look right into it. It was like a, it was like a shop light, but a hundred times brighter. But it didn't hurt your eyes. And I'm looking straight into it, and I'm like wondering what's on the other side of that kind of like, what's on the other side of that? There's got to be something on the other side. But it was veiled is the best way I could describe it. That white light was the veil that kept me from entering heaven or whatever that other side was I didn't know but it was a white veil and I could feel presences this is another thing that's hard to explain is I didn't hear voices I didn't hear something telling me Seth uh, I didn't hear that no it was a download of like instant information it was like boom and I just knew all these things like boom everyone you know and love is right here boom here's your buddy here's your dog who just passed away ten days before you had your heart attack which I think that stress kind of helped lead to my heart attack from me losing my best friend but he was one of the first souls that I felt the presence of was my dog blue and uh, I just knew there was this other presence I couldn't pinpoint as a friend or family but I swear I felt like he was my absolute best friend that I had ever met he was my absolute best friend and I never got his name really. I was just like, oh, hey, what's up, buddy? You're, you're my absolute best friend, you know? Who are you, you know? I know who you are. You know who I am. But I didn't say his name, and he didn't say my name, but it was Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ himself, who was my friend. And uh, 
So I started, once I felt that feeling of peace and I wanted to stay there, I didn't want to come back to whatever I was doing here. And I remember kind of arguing. I, this is another portion of my testimony. is A lot of my memory was kind of blanked. I don't remember every detail. One thing I do remember is kind of arguing at the end. Like, well, oh, come on, you know, like a, I've written Christian music and I've done this and that. And I was kind of stating my case, you know, come on, don't send me back there. Come on. And uh, this is when I heard the first actual audible audible words of my experience and I was coming back to earth as I heard it but uh I started coming back into my body as I was arguing please let me stay please let me stay and I, then I heard no not yet I heard the words no not yet and that just tripped me out and like even though it's so simple and such an easy thing to understand that those three words have been like so profound in my life and they've changed my life like I uh live in a different fashion now because I want to be a Christian, because I want to do Christian music, because I want to do things that, on a, in a Christian level that I've never even, never even fathomed before. When I used to write music, I wrote music about pot and getting high and freaking hanging out with your homies and getting drunk and getting laid, and that's what I wrote music about. But after my experience, I was like, oh, no, uh, I'm writing, uh, I'm going to write good music with positive messages and if it doesn't mention something about the Bible, it's going to mention a philosophy of the Bible. So this is uh, this is my new mission, is to uh, write Christian music for God and to uh, just give my testimony. Someone challenged me to do this, and I was like, hey, I have a near-death experience, and it's real, and, I, and I'd like to share it myself. Because who knows, if I have another heart attack tomorrow and I don't tell you guys that Jesus Christ is real... I'm going to feel real bad about it, and, and he ain't going to like it either. So, And, you know, here's the way. When you realize that Jesus is real, you'll realize a couple things. You'll realize he died for us. What kind of crazy, gutsy person goes out on the limb for a bunch of people he doesn't even know? Jesus Christ did. And that's why, and he's also, he's a portion of the creator, if not the creator in the flesh, you know? So it's like, why can't we give thanks to who created us? Why can't we give thanks to the human form of the creator who actually died for us in a torturous way? We couldn't have done that for anybody. Like, we don't have the capacity to love like that. We don't have the capacity to be gutsy like that and to take that kind of pain for strangers. Only Jesus Christ did. And that's why this is my job to testify for Jesus, to testify on behalf of my friend Jesus, to testify on behalf of my Lord and Savior Jesus, and to play music and uh, shout praises to him in a positive way. So I just want to tell everyone I love them. I don't care how much you hate me, I love you. <laughs> and in Jesus Christ, I just want to say thank you, and uh, thanks for listening. God bless you.